Hello, Mr. Bill Poker Peeps. Welcome to the vlog. Man, I've been hobnobbing with the poker rich and famous lately, have I not? <laughs> Uh, last week I put out a vlog with Trevor Savage. This week the vlog is going to be all about playing with the Solve for Why guys at Texas Card House. They had cash games on Friday. I didn't arrive until Saturday when they had the big tournament and some cash games after that. And then Sunday they had a Texas Card House live stream of a 5-5 game. I was not there for that one either. But I did talk to the Texas Card House owner. They're going to be uh, coming to Dallas. They are going to be doing some live streams out of Dallas. Uh, I told him I was interested. He said he was interested in having me play. So maybe I'll get to play on some Texas Card House live streams uh, when we can actually play poker again. <laughs> You'll see here that I got to play some cash games with the Solve for Y guys. Had a few guys at my tables. I never did get to play at any tables with Berkey or Soda, which I would have liked to have done. But hey, that's how it is. I did get to talk to those guys for just a few short minutes, and uh, that was interesting. So. Right, guys, I made it to Austin to Texas Card House for the Saturday tournament with uh, the Solve for Y guys. I'm here pretty early, so I got about an hour to wait. All right, it's $350 for 30,000 chips. Solve for why, Texas Card House, here we go. All right, I played a really interesting hand on one of the early, early levels. Blinds are 100, 200, no big blind ante yet. I'm in middle position, one, with eight of diamonds, nine of diamonds. The under the gun limps, I limp. Middle position, two limps. The button makes it 1,000. The under the gun calls, and I decide to make the call. The flop with 3,500 in the pot comes nine of clubs, seven of hearts, five of diamonds, and it checks around. The turn brings the eight of spades, two pair for me. Uh, under the gun bets 2,000. This is a woman who didn't really look like she knew how to play very well. <laughs> um, I made the call and the other players folded. The river with 7,500 in the pot comes the six of clubs, puts a straight on the board. She checks to me and I think, you know what? I'm gonna make a bet here, take this down. I represent that I have a 10 or better. So I bet $3,500. She makes the call. She looks at my eight, nine and almost mucks her hand until somebody says, hey, there's a straight on the board. So anyhow, she had no idea there was a straight on the board. We end up chopping the pot. She had queen eight. No clue. All right, later on, blinds at 200, 300 with a 300 big blind ante. I have pocket sixes with 19,700 chips, not as many. <laughs> I'm in middle position one. Uh, I raise it up to $700. The small blind calls, and there is a crazy Asian guy in the big blind. He has shown raises with 7-5, Jack Deuce, and then also good hands, ace king and things like that. But he is just playing crazy. Um, he raises it up to 4,200. I go ahead and I shove it all in there. I think I've gotta be ahead of him so many times. Uh, the other person folds and this guy makes the call. He has ace of diamonds, nine of hearts. He was actually way better than I thought he might've been. <laughs> the board comes two, nine, eight, seven. And the woman in seat five yells, five, bink, five, right on the river. <laughs> I tell the woman, nice call. And I win on a suck out on the river. <laughs> and this was a crazy table. I'm there, there was people raising and four betting and going all in all over the place. So it was really an interesting table. And we'll see that with this next hand. I am in the cutoff with Ace of Diamonds, King of Diamonds. I'm now up to 38,200. There are two limpers to me. My crazy Asian friend is behind me, so I decide I would limp to induce. And indeed, he obliges in the big blind and raises it up to 2,400. Uh, two players make the call. I just said, I'm gonna shove it all in right here, <laughs> which I do. The next two players fold and this clueless woman from hand one, she decides she's gonna make the call for her effective stack of 30,600 with Queen of Hearts, Jack of Diamonds. Yes, I am so far ahead. And the board comes 8827, and as is life, Jack on the river and beats me. Ugh, poker. 
So I'm down to 11,000 chips. I have pocket kings in middle position one. My crazy Asian friend raises it up to $1,400, comes to me, I shove it all in there. I don't think he's ever folding after raising. He indeed makes the call. He has king of clubs, 10 of clubs. I am just crushing him and the board runs out. Queen, jack, eight, ace, giving him Broadway, five. Ugh, rebuy time. So I spend the $310 to rebuy, get another 30,000 chips, go to a new table, and I am just card dead. <laughs> it was really, really bad for a while. And this table is way tougher than that first one. There's some solve for Y guys on the table and some really good players. So tougher to get chips at this one. So with blinds at 500, 1,000, I'm in middle position two with ace of spades, jack of diamonds. I have 25,000 chips. Uh, I make it 3,300, the hijack and the button both call. So the flop with 12,400 in the pot comes king of spades, queen of spades, five of hearts. I've got a gutter ball. I could represent that I have a really big hand. So I go ahead and just stick it all in there for a little more than 21,000. The next guy folds. And then there's this sticky, sticky old guy on the button. He'd been really, really mixing it up. He decides to call. He has king 10. Uh-oh, I'm in big trouble. But the board comes out. Seven of spades, five of spades, and I hit the nut flush. <laughs> what a suck out. <laughs> Two hands later, I'm in the plus one with ace of clubs, ace of diamonds. Yes, siree. I have 55K. I again raise it up to 3,300. The big blind calls. He only has 16,500 chips. The flop with 8,100 in the pot comes ace of spades, king of clubs, five of hearts. I couldn't ask for more than that. It goes check, check. The turn is the queen of spades. He leads out for 5,000 of his remaining 12,200 chips. I say, I'm all in. He says, I fold. Oops. <laughs> I was actually very, very surprised that after he bet 5,000 and had 7,200 left, he could ever make the fold, but he must have had absolutely nothing. Texas Card House, Austin, Texas. Second break of the Sulfur Y uh, right. tournament. I have 49K, it's okay. Just under average. So with blinds at 1,000, 2,000, I went on a nice little run. One hand, I was in the cutoff. I raised it up to 5,100 uh, with King Jack. The blinds called. I flopped a king. I bet everybody folded. And another one, I had pocket jacks. Raised it up to 5,100. The button called. And the board came. King 5, 3, 8, 7. It checked around all three streets. And I won that one also. So the next hand, I'm in the big blind with 60,000. I have ace of clubs, nine of spades. One of the solve for Y guys is in the cutoff. He raises it up to 4K. The small blind calls, I call. The flop with 14,000 in the pot comes jack of hearts, jack of clubs, nine of hearts. It checks around. The turn, nine of clubs. Bingo bongo, that's a full house for me. It checks around again. The river, two of hearts. Uh, there's a check. I make it 6,100 into the 14K. The solve for Y guy calls, the next guy folds. He had ace X and I win that pot. I'm up to 73,000 now. I'm going to the dinner break. I've got 62,000. The blinds are about to go in two to four, so I'm a little bit short. I need to double up. All right, the board says 51 players left. They're gonna pay 27, so I need to do a little work. I then forgot about recording hands for a while. We got down to 40 players and I was actually short. In fact, I went to a new table, Matthew Liu was there. Uh, he was in the big blind. I shoved all in for like 10 bigs. Comes all the way around to him, he says, hey, since you introduced me and you're a vlogger too, I won't call. <laughs> he probably had a really crappy hand. <laughs> I then won a number of other all-ins and now we're down to 36 players left. Blinds are 4,000, 8,000. I have 80K, I'm in the big blind, I have ace of spades, eight of diamonds. So there's an old player, probably the oldest player in the tournament, he's in the middle position one, he has 110,000 chips, and he limps. I'd seen him limp with pocket kings, I'd seen him limp with ace king, I also saw him limp with 10-7 and 5-4. So he was completely a wild card. The small blind calls, and now what do I do here? Do I just check and get to see some free cards, or should I jam? My gut's telling me jam. What do you guys do here? I checked my option. So the flop with 32,000 in the pot came ace of clubs, nine of clubs, four of clubs. 
it goes check check to the middle position one he makes it ten thousand uh the other guy folds i think i'm too strong here i make the call the turn with 52,000 is another ace, the ace of diamonds, and here I made a really big mistake. I shoved all in for 62K. He absolutely snap calls with six of clubs, eight of clubs. Um, the river is a six of hearts, and he wins on a flush, and I just hate this play. My play should have been to check call anything. Um, when I shove, I'm just putting myself in a horrible position. He's always going to call me with better hands, a better ace, or a flush. And if he has nothing, he's just going to fold. Um, so I just really, really hate that shove there. Uh, the bus of the Solve for Y at Texas Card House Tournament in 36th, and they only paid 27. Ouch. All right, as disappointed as I was to go out of the tournament, uh, most of the Solve for Y guys were out of the tournament too, and were playing cash. I think only Berkey and Chris K were left in the tournament when I went out. So, time to buy into one of the cash games and hopefully get at a table with the Solve for Y guys. And I happen to be put at a table with Matt Hunt, Brian LaMana, and a whole bunch of other guys who had either pretty good stacks or were just very, very active players. And this is what I talked about a little bit last week. Blinds really don't matter. Uh, what matters is stack size and the way that people play. For example, Matt Hunt had $1,600. There's a couple other guys that had $1,100, $1,200. Um, I could only buy in for the minimum, which was $300, but I quickly moved that up. And there was a whole bunch of good stacks at the table. The average preflop bet was either $15 or $20. Many, many three bets, sometimes some four bets. Uh, I was playing pretty aggressive, much, much bigger than the normal one two games that most people play at and the first hand i'm going to tell you about is against brian lamana of solve for why real real nice guy we were having a lot of fun i have ace king of hearts in the cutoff with 275 dollars uh brian limps there's another limper i make it 25 and both of those players call so the flop with 78 dollars in the pot is pretty darn good King of diamonds, jack of hearts, five of hearts, I flop top pair, top kicker, and nut flush draw. It checks to me, I make it $35, and Brian raises it up to $100. The other guy folds, <laughs> nothing to do here except for shove it all in. I do for $240, Brian calls. We decide we will go ahead and run it twice. He has king of spades, jack of diamonds, a flop top two. The first board comes three of hearts, three of clubs, I win that one. And the second board comes seven of clubs, nine of spades. He wins that one. Didn't win very much money on that one. At Texas Card House, they have a button that goes opposite of the dealer button. And when the two match, they do a $5 bomb pot in the one two game. So there's nine players at the table, $45 at the pot. I look down and I have 10 four off suit. Yahoo! <laughs> the first board comes. Queen 10 4, bottom two pair. The second board comes 7 8 9. That's pretty good. I have bottom two on one board, I'm open ended on the other board. The plus one makes it 25. Middle position one makes the call. The cutoff makes the call. I don't have much to do here except for shove it all in there for 245, which is what I do. The plus one calls for less. I think he had 145 total. And then middle position one folded and the cutoff made the call. He had me covered. The first player has 10 jacks. So he's got a pair of tens on the top and he's got a straight on the bottom. The other player has three six of hearts, has really no chance on the top. And he's got a flush draw on the bottom. The top board runs out ace, which I hate, deuce, but I win that one. The bottom board runs out queen, four of hearts. So the guy with three six of hearts uh, got that one. Anyhow, I ended up chopping both top and bottom and made some pretty good money on that one. All right, there was a player there. His name was Ben. Evidently, he is a regular at Card House in Austin. This is the first time I've ever been there, so I don't really know the players very well. And Ben is very aggressive. He must feel good and strong. So I have king of diamonds, 10 of diamonds, in the big blind, I have $300. There's five limpers <laughs> to me. I make it $20 and three of the players call. So there's $83 in the pot and it comes ace of diamonds, five of diamonds, seven of hearts. I have a backdoor straight and I have the nut flush draw. It checks to me. I bet out $30 into my 83. The cutoff, who's aggressive Ben, Makes it $75. We've seen this a lot of times already tonight. 
comes back around to me. I go ahead and shove it all in there and he tanks and tanks and he makes a crying call saying, I am so far behind. The turn, bingo, bongo, nine of diamonds. And he says something like, well, you'd think that card was really, really good for me, but it's not. <laughs> because I have the nuts now. The river is the three of spades. I show my flush. He turns over an ace and says, I can't believe I was actually ahead. <laughs> but personally, I think that's the way you have to play your flush draws. Number one, you have fold equity by shoving all in there in case they just decide they don't have a good enough hand. In fact, he almost folded. And if they do call, you have a good amount of equity. The other thing, if you slow play a flush draw and then the flush comes, there's so many times that you don't get paid on it. So, a little advice from Mr. Bill. Play your flush draws very, very strongly. Get paid off. Make money. Yes. I then was so tired, pretty much almost in a coma because I'd been playing since midnight and it was now like one or two in the morning. <laughs> So I didn't record any more hands. Uh, I ended up doing pretty well at Texas Card House in Austin, fired two bullets in the tournament, and lost $650. But I came back in only a few hours in the cash game and made $550. So it cost me $100 for the trip, which was fine, and it was a lot of fun, so I really am glad I got to do it. Playing with Matt Hunt and Brian Lamana was quite fun. Uh, we had a lot of conversation about sports and poker and they're traveling to Austin and trying to promote their brand. And there was actually people who had never heard of Sulphur Y, which I don't know what poker planet they're from. <laughs> But anyhow, it was really, really good time and I enjoyed it. So if you guys happen to watch this, I really, really appreciate you guys coming out to Austin and we were just having a great time. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. For me, it was fun to make. Um, man, are we living in some crazy times or what? Keep your chin up, everything's gonna be okay. I know that it's gonna be rough and I really feel for you guys who are hourly wage guys, who are the ones who are really, really being affected by this. I have said locally, if there's anything I can do for somebody, uh, I'm still making <laughs> trips to the grocery store or if you need somebody to pick up a package and take it to the post office or whatever. If you're in my area, I'd be more than happy to help. And of course, because of the coronavirus, we're going to have to change a few things. I may not get to play as much live poker. Uh, I did a live stream last night on YouTube, which was really, really fun for me. And I think it was successful. If you haven't seen it, go back and uh, look at the replay. And maybe I'll be doing some more of that stuff. Billy's coming home, so maybe I'll get him involved in some stuff. I can tell you, regardless of what happens, I will be putting out content, whether it's about a subject I'm interested in or just thoughts on life or thoughts on poker, I'll be putting something out. I hope you guys will enjoy it and I'm sure that I will be talking about something I wanna talk about, so I should enjoy it too. In the meantime, you guys have a fantastic, wonderful and blessed week. Wear your mask, <laughs> wash your hands, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.